Hello folks, Rich Caparilla here with music director of the Pacific Symphony, Carl St. Clair, and we are here for the fourth broadcast in our series of the first half of the 2019-2020 season of Pacific Symphony, now broadcasting once again on KUSC, Sunday night starting at 7. So in one hour, you will hear the fourth concert of the season at KUSC.org or at 91.5 or any of the other KUSC frequencies. So we are here as a sort of a pre-concert and tonight especially exciting because not only do you get to hear from the conductor himself, but also the conductor of the first work on the program, a program that includes music by the great Elliot Goldenthal, a work called October Sky, and then, or Adagio for Carl's 30th, and then there is the Piano Concerto Number no. 3 by Prokofiev, Vadim Kolodenko. Uh, you, when you watch the performance, we'll have a brief performance clip, you will wonder, did the piano survive? Because, boy, Kolodenko is something. And then, the Beethoven Apotheosis of the Dance, as Wagner once so famously called it, Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. So, Carl, welcome, and here we are once again for another it's, pre-concert. It's great to be back with you, Rich, as always, and I love these six o'clock Sunday afternoons. I'm, I always look forward to them, and we've had three wonderful shows, so I'm just delighted that we can do this show. This, of course, was from December, so just, just a few months before uh, everything got stopped, and so, it's great to be back with you, and I'm just so delighted that we can have Elliot Goldenthal with us, and so many, and and the Prokofi fan, of course, Beethoven, which has a very, very special place in my heart, especially in my relationship with the Pacific Symphony. So I'm glad we get to talk about that as well. And if memory serves, your connection with the great Leonard Bernstein. Yes, we, I hope we can get into that. I hope we have time for Why that. Why not? Yeah, I mean, I. That, that Deutsche Grammophon recording is historic in so, so very many ways. Well, so the, the piece with which this concert begins, Adagio for Carl's 30th, it's a world premiere. And in fact, it was written in honor of your 30th anniversary season with Pacific Symphony. How did it go? Did he say, I want to do something for your 30th. What can I do? Or did the orchestra approach him and say, hey, listen, you know, could you do something? How, how does that go? Well, you know, as I've said before in, in our, in our pre-concert talks, everybody, every piece, every composer, every soloist uh, that's on this particular season, which is very dear to my heart, uh, it's really, really has a special meaning, either to me personally, to the musicians, or to the, 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 our relationship. And of course, Elliot is one of my dearest friends and is a great, great composer, has written two pieces for us prior to this one, which we can talk about when he comes on with us. And so it's just wonderful to have him here. I'm so happy. He's out on Martha's Vineyard. So I know it's getting a little late there. So we better get him in here. Well, tell you what, let us play that little bit of of, of, of the Adagio and then bring in uh, 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 Elliot. Is that all right? Perfect. All right, because I don't see him here yet. So here is just a bit of a work you'll be hearing in its entirety starting tonight at seven o'clock and a bit of digital wondrous here uh, and also, I need to ask uh, Christopher to make me uh, a, a host level so I can actually do the sh uh, screen share. So once we get that engaged, I will be able to, oh, there we go. I think I just got it. Here we go. Who can share? All of us. Uh, and it goes like this. And here is what we'll be hearing, a little bit of the brand new work by Elliot Goldenthal. It's just the last three minutes or so. Right, here we go.
Wow, I really love hearing that. Folks may have noticed the um, folks may have noticed the very last scene, the very last notes being given to solo cello, and there was a, a, a sad and profound story behind that and the entire nature of the work. But in order to find out firsthand, Carl, shall we welcome Elliot Goldenthal? Absolutely. Elliot, there we are. Hey, good to see you, sir. Good, good. Yeah, hey, Elliot, uh, it's great I heard to see that, you. I heard that too. I didn't hear it uh, since the performance. Uh, great work, Carl. You know, beautiful, beautiful conducting on that. Hey, Matt, it's great to see you. I miss you. Yeah, me too. So you, you two have the story behind the genesis of this, this very powerful piece. Well, like I said, I, I wanted to invite Elliot to write a piece because he's been such an important part of the Pacific Symphony's life throughout my 30 years, starting back with Firewater Paper, the Vietnam Oratorio in 1996, and then Symphony in G-sharp minor in 2014. And then, right. and of course, it's just, and of course, you have to know that Elliot's Firewater and Paper was the first recording that we did with Sony Classics when that was, and very unusual that Sony Classics would be recording a work of, of the size and scope of the Pacific Symphony back in those days. But of course that ha all had to do with Elliot and his friendship. And then, uh, yes, and Carl, um, uh, you're so uh, kind to have asked me to, uh, you know, to compose that piece. If you remember, it started with cello. The first notes was cello. Yep. The first gesture was Carl. The, sec the first sound was cello. Yeah, you know, the cello, of course, plays an important role because in April of 2019, our dear principal cellist, Timothy Landauer, passed away, and it was a shock and still is to the orchestra. And Elliot being very sensitive to that because Firewater Paper also in the first section has a large, long, very extensive cello obligato part, which Timothy played so beautifully, and of course, Elliot's memory of that. But Elliot, remember, I wanted Elliot to write an adagio. Because for those of you that know Elliot's film music, when he writes adagios in his film scores, it's like an extenuation of what Mahler might have written after the adagio of the 10th symphony. I mean, they are, Elliot, it's, it, I, I'm sorry, I'm just in love with them. And I just wanted you to write me something like that. And, and you did, and it was, it was incredible. But I mean, if you listen to the adagios from Cobb and so many other of your scores, I, where do you go to get those kinds of intensities? Well, in, in this case, um, uh, I thought this piece was about yearning and aspiration. And any conductor, especially yourself, um, and, 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 and Timothy, uh, and it's a, a certain, you live all your life yearning, inspiring, and, 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 and uh, you don't know where you're going. And it's, um, it, it, you take a, a you have a metamorphosis in your life, and all of a sudden you find yourself being a musician or being an artist. And what do you look for? You look for the beautiful. You you yearn, you aspire towards the beautiful. And um, um, uh, the passage you, you played, the, the last uh, three minutes, has, has a, a four note um, uh, motive that keeps going up and it keeps yearning and aspiring to go somewhere. And there's no, uh, there's no um, uh, preparation when it ends. It's just a kind of a disappear in a, a theory of blues somehow. It just, just, just becomes part of light at the end. And uh, you never know when the uh, uh, aspiration is going to terminate, whether it's uh, your work on, uh, in the Pacific Symphony, all of a sudden you have another gig or your contract runs out or the contract of your own life runs out. And, uh, um, you know, the deadline of a commission runs out, but it's the yearning before, it, it, it's the aspiration before. I hate to be. I remember. Hurt. I remember you were saying that you were taking a walk, and there was a, a particularly beautiful sort of brilliant day that where sunlight was coming through, and that that had some play in as in the inspiration of the title and also the brightness of the work. 
Yes. Um, I actually, the title comes from a John Gardner uh, novel, uh, October Light. Uh, and uh, I was thinking about that. Um, I wrote an opera called Grendel, and it was based on uh, uh, Beowulf legend uh, uh, from the monster point of view. Um, also, uh, uh, John Gardner. But I was thinking about one passage uh, that Gardner is uh, referring to uh, an old uh, farmer in, uh, in rural America uh, talking about aging and he talking about the pull of the earth. And there's something about the juxtaposition between the light uh, that uh, I see here um, uh, next to the sea uh, in Mother's Vineyard, um, Massachusetts, there's something about 5.30 in the morning light and, and, and the gravitas, the gravity uh, uh, of the earth. And then I was in between those, those two things when I was, uh, got the inspiration, um, when I actually knuckled down to write a piece for uh, you, Carl. And uh, it was a, a great delight. What can I just ask a question? And I don't think I asked this back in December when we premiered the work. But first of all, the process, Rich, you can't believe the process of creating this piece and the, the give and take and the understanding and what what Elliot allowed us to do and encouraged us to do and searching to create this piece and to bring it to life. But Elliot, this long sort of incredible scream, this this held scream just before this long this immediate subit, subito silence. And then, I, what is this, what is, what are you, is this sort of the pining or the crying or the just no. crying? No, 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 it's not a Weltschmerz or anything like that. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's more like, um, if I reflect, it's more like, uh, people have the near death experiences and they talk about a blinding light that they see uh, before they get somehow miraculously returned to uh, uh, corporeal life. You know, they, they, they see something, they experience a blinding light. That's uh, what, I, uh, what I was after in retrospect. Mm -hmm. I have a question, by the way. Uh, yes, Rich. Uh, yeah. And that is, Art seems to reflect and always has reflected the reality of the day. What is it like being a composer during a pandemic? What, what, how, what kind of thoughts are going through your musical side as we go through this? Well, of course, when I composed it, uh, there wasn't uh, a pandemic yet. And right. it was shortly before. And, and uh, uh, Carl brought up Mahler. And as a Mahler 10th and, and uh, works like that uh, towards the end of his career, many thought he was foreshadowing uh, the, the uh, World War I, the horrible um, uh, um, the state of uh, horror in, 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 um, in Europe and uh, even the Holocaust, who knows? But uh, the, the um, uh, there's one chord in the, the first movement of the, the, the Mahler 10th, uh, if you record, the record that's stacking up dissonances in, in, in the brass uh, that's uh, um, like intertwined uh, diminished chords uh, that uh, uh, has a, a fermata on top. It's, it's uh, hellish to listen to, but it sounded like a premonition. It's not a premonition. He died in 1911. It wasn't a premonition of 1912 or 1913. It felt like, you know, a, a state of uh, which, uh, of uh, a dark state of which uh, Europe uh, fell into. As far as the pandemic, I'm composing now uh, every day. That's what I mean. That's what I was asking about. Was what, but, uh, how, how was it informing? You're a composer. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm not uh, the people uh, heroically on the front lines, like bus drivers, people, people working at um, supermarkets, or musicians, or choristers. They 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 thrive and they live in a, a community realm. For me, I disappear. Uh, you know, like certain 
political candidates in my basement. And, you know, I just, just they're here, you know, I'm just in the basement as we speak. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, uh, it's, I, I can feel above me all the pressure of, of humanity, all, all the, the, the heaviness, uh, and uh, not to say that uh, the, the, the COVID uh, virus won't sneak in here, you know, when I go to the grocery or receive the mail or who knows, you know, but uh, still, I'm at my best when I'm, a, I'm alone, really. Elliot, can I ask a question? I don't think I've ever asked ask anyone, all of my composer friends, but how do you know when a piece is over? <laughs> like, how do you know when, when, when October, how did, how do you know when it's finished? And is it something that's instinctive? Is it in, intuitive? Is it structural? Is it theoretical? In your mind, how did you know that when the cellist played to ding, that that was going to be the end of the piece? I, I'm I sorry if that, that put you. The, the easy, easy answer, I, I, I look at the calendar and say, you know, <laughs> I have a, 11 days uh, left. Uh, but 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 the difficult answer is you have a, you, you have a you have an instinct of uh, feeling the the coda of whatever you trying to um, uh, achieve. But it's never it's agonizing for me, uh, Carl. And, and it, it's it's like um, when it's done, I want to fix it. I want to go back and compose it all over again. You know, so so it's not done. I like the ending, but there's a lot of stuff in between that I wish last longer, for example. But know, every, I, every, composer has, every composer has that sense. You know, I wish I would have done this, but I will tell you, the reason I asked that question is kind of because I already had my own answer. For me, it was perfect. The structure, the balance. I mean, I don't think I've ever said to a composer, that piece is too short. You know, uh, you know, I've always said, well, if you cut and trim over here and we did this, and we did that. But for me, the structure and the flow of October, it was perfect. And, and I want to compliment you on that. And all of the adagios that I listened to you, I mean, adagios could go on interminably. You know that. I mean, they, by the sense of their, just their name, adagio, it's slow. But all of the adagios you compose, I feel a really a sense of completion and fulfillment you know, at the end of them, and I didn't need anything else, and I didn't pine for anything more. And I, I, I that's one of the real beauties of this particular piece. And I just can't thank you enough that that you you took part in the 30th anniversary, and that you that you you gave us this jewel. And I look forward to being able. You know, I I had it programmed, and I will program it again because you know the Pacific Symphony musicians. I we worked really hard to. To, to make it what you wanted it to be. And I'm very proud of that. And I, I think the uh, audience will listen, hear that. And it was, uh, for, you, it was for you, Carl, uh, and uh, most importantly. And uh, it helps to be on a concert with uh, Beethoven's seventh in Prokofiev uh, Piano Concerto, you know. You don't want to carry on too long, <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, listen, it was a world premiere. And I will tell you, the reaction of our musicians to your work and the reaction of the audience each and every night and after we actually <clears throat> put it all together and, and shaped it and molded it the way you wanted it, it there was a very profound feeling on stage and, and in our audiences and I think even our radio audience will feel that tonight. And I should probably uh, 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 pipe in here and say that you are watching a pre-concert because tonight in about uh, 40 minutes, KUSC at KUSC.org or at the frequencies including 91.5, will be rebroadcasting the December concerts by the Pacific Symphony, including Elliot Godenthal's Adagio for Carl's 30th anniversary season. This concert first broadcast back in February, but of course the season did not continue. Or rather, yeah, it broadcast in February. Oh, broadcast. Was, yeah, the first broadcast. So we're doing it again because there is no second half of the season. But the good news is we get to hear Elliot's new piece again, as well as the Prokofiev and the Beethoven. So that starts at seven o'clock at KUSC. 
And uh, Elliot, thank you so much. It's great, great to see you again. And thank, uh, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Elliot, I miss you, bud. Big hugs. Yeah. Be yeah. safe out there in the vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. See you. Ciao. Elliot Goldenthal, ladies and gentlemen, whose uh, October light will be premiered once again tonight, starting at seven o'clock.